turn your frown upside down, upside down, upside down. Turn your frown upside down, it turns into a smile. So smile and show your dimple, then you'll realize that every empty dimple is a sunbeam in disguise. So turn your frown upside down, upside down, upside down. Turn your frown upside down, and you will wear. Uh, okay, you. The game is up. What game, my little friend? Oh, uh, I didn't see you, Bobo. I was just practicing my first lesson, Bobo. Lesson? Yeah. I I'm taking a correspondence course on how to be a detective. And after I know the last lesson good, I'll get my diploma. And what is the last lesson, my little bloodhound? It's called Harrowing the Quarry, or How to Bring in Your Man. I don't know what the first part means. So I call it by the second. Quiet, my avenger of justice. I'm getting an idea for our next play. We will do a tale of a lovely maiden in dire peril. An innocent child whose life is saved by a private eye. It begins in the office of this hunter of criminals. He has solved his latest crime but a scant three minutes ago. When... Will you please help a poor orphaned old man, miss, who's all alone in the world? Wish now, but it's cruel lonesome to be alone. Wait till I see if there's a bit of change about the place. Don't bother, Snippy. It's only me. <gasps> Mr. Brawley, save us, but you gave me a start. Sorry, Snippy, but I couldn't risk being recognized. You know, you're the only one who has ever seen me as I really am. And how do I know you're really you? And not something that hangs from one of them pegs at night. You're right, Snippy. I'm going to let my next client see me as I really am. I'm tired of living behind a beard or under a wig. Excuse me, but are you Mr. Brawny? I'm Bill Brawny, miss. The world's finest private eye. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Brawny, I'll be getting to me work. Is there something I can do for you, miss? I'm in dire peril. What's wrong? Well, you see, it's this way, Mr. Brawny. The letters come and the things fall and sometimes knives... This sounds like the fiend has returned after his disappearance seven years ago. Who are you? My name is Betty Bluebird. The heiress who has just inherited 33 and a third million dollars? Yes. You see, my grandfather who left me the money was the Fraction Traction King. He gave two-thirds of his last hundred million to charity. Go on. Ever since my 21st birthday, when I came into the money, the strangest things have been happening to me. Such as? Knives go whizzing past my ear at breakfast. The chandeliers drop, or the stairs give way. Oh, I may be wrong, Mr. Brawny, or overwrought, but I have the strangest feeling someone is trying to kill me. Who do you live with, Miss Bluebird? My uncle, the dearest guardian in the world. We're devoted to each other. He thinks I'm just nervous, and of course he may be correct. But this whizzed into my pillow yesterday morning as I slept. I think you are a little nervous, Miss Bluebird. I noticed your eyes fluttered a good deal while you talked and I... Oh, that's a different kind of nervousness, Mr. Brawny. But still, this knife plunking into your pillow is suspicious. I'm convinced this is the work of the fiend. I'll take your case, Miss Bluebird. I vowed I'd bring the fiend to justice. This looks like my chance. Oh, thank you, sir. I feel relieved already. You! Oh, it's impossible. It's, it's impossible. Why, Gordy Bobo, what do you mean? I, I mean, my dear, it's an impossible hour for you to be up. It's so early. Dear, dear guardian, always thinking of my welfare. As your guardian, my child, it's my duty. As an uncle who loves you deeply, it's my concern. Gordy, how sweet of you. But I haven't just gotten up. I've just gotten home. What? Out all night? Where have you been? All rich girls do social service work. Last night it was my turn to babysit at the foundling home. There it goes again. What? I've been hearing thuds every time I enter this room lately. It's as if someone were throwing something heavy about. You must be overtired, my dear. I can hear nothing. Oh, I, I suppose you're right, Gordy. Only I do seem to hear them. <laughs> Nonsense, my dear. Go to your room and rest. You'll feel better in the morning. <laughs> I mean, uh, this afternoon. Good night. Uh, I mean, good morning, Gaudy dear. 
Those fools! What are you doing, you fools? Oh, pitching horseshoes, Bobo. I've won most of Lippy's share of the cut we get for helping you knock off your niece. You fools. She was out last night. Oh, Bobo, that ain't nice for a young single girl to stay out all night. You ought to punish her for it. Lippy's right, Bobo. That ain't no way for a nice girl to act. Shut up. I'll do the job myself. Tonight, where's my old disguise? Where are you going? Home. Good night. Home, is it? Not if I know you, Mr. Brawny. You'll be sneaking out to that Betty Bluebird and saving her life just to show off before her. Well, me fine bucko, two can play at that game. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Snippy, female private eye. A copper. Grab her, Luffy. And you ought to be ashamed of yourselves, two fine boys like you crooking around. What would your mothers say? Oh. We wasn't always crooks, Miss Snippy, honest. I don't believe you. You have the looks of crooks about you. Dippy's telling the truth, Miss Snippy. We used to be on the vaudeville stage before they closed it down. We was actors, wasn't we, Dippy? Yeah, we was. A likely story indeed. Let's prove it to her, Dippy. Let's do our act. Okay. Oh, me and my pal are the funniest blokes that ever stopped a clock. If you don't think that we tell the funniest jokes, you ought to see your doc. Hey, why does a chicken cross the street? Because he sees something he wants to eat. <laughs> we write our own material. And we are never guilty. Of stealing any of our gags. From dear old Uncle Milty. Hey, why does an elephant have to be strong? Because he must carry his trunk along. <laughs> oh, me and my pal are the funniest guys. A rip, rip, roar and day. We laugh till the tears trickle down from our eyes. Cause we think we are a scream. Yes, yes we, we think, think we are a scream. And don't be maybe. Save us. Now I know why they had to turn to crooking. I've caught you, fiend. Oh, oh, who are you? Bill Brawny, the world's finest private eye. Mr. Brawny, sir, leave my bedroom immediately. <laughs> You'll never take me, Brawny. Those are but two petty accomplices, Snippy. The real brains of the gang is Miss Bluebird's guardian, Bobo, alias the Fiend. Oh, no! Oh, yes. Look. You can't make that stick, Brony. That mustache won't hold up in court. Perhaps not by itself it won't, but this will. <gasps> Where did you get that? I suspected you from the first, but I had to have concrete evidence. I disguised myself as a maid, and I... You said you weren't going to use a disguise on this job, Mr. Brawny. That was to throw you off, Snippy. Knowing you would try and get her before me, I pretended I was going home. Then, when you left the office, I crept back, donned the maid's disguise, and came out here. 
I crept up the back stairs to the fiend's room. I searched everywhere. Finally, I found the mustache cup. Save us, but there's no keeping up with the man. I always knew he would get me. Take them away, Snippy. Oh, Mr. Brawny, you were wonderful. If it weren't for you, I'd have been murdered in my sleep and never known who did it. You're a hero. That's all in a day's work, Miss Bluebird. I can't believe it's only that, sir. You're right, Miss Bluebird. I have loved you from the moment I first saw you. But how could a private eye, even if he is the world's finest, hope to woo and win you? Easily, sir. For I, too, lost my heart to you when first I entered your office. Miss Bluebird. Mr. Brawny. I'm your private eye. And you're my private you. I'll watch over you, protect you all my whole life through. You're my private eye, and I'm your private me. All the love that's in my heart is just for you to see. Hand in hand we'll swing beneath the sunlit sky. My private I and I. Everyone will sing, it must be grand to be My private eye and me You're my private eye And you're my private you We will share a private nest, a happy pair for all the rest oh. And so, my friend Bill appears as the private eye, Snippy as Snippy, Dippy and Lippy as the two crooks, Betty Bluebird as the heiress, Betty Bluebird, and I, of course, shall play the fiend. <laughs> Turn your crown upside down, upside down, upside down. Turn your crown upside down, it turns into a smile. So smile and show your dimple, then you realize. And every empty dimple is a sunbeam in disguise. So turn your crown upside down, upside down, upside down. Turn your crown upside down, and you will wear 